Today's little project is this realistic uh, five inch portable television, black and white one. Um, model number or catalog number 16-9519A black and white with AM FM radio, Port Division a uh, little Australian one not sure where this one was made in Malaysia of all places so there you go, looks like it's got possibility for putting batteries in here uh, you can fill it up with D cells so quite a bit of the TV is just a battery holder D cells times 9 so it's got a 12 volt DC socket here an external antenna via a 3.5 millimeter jack headphone socket power contrast brightness and vertical hold on the back here uh, I've got this tuned into the well it was tuned into the set top box but we have a bit of a whoops volume the power switch is a little touchy too but the, we've got some sort of vertical fault vertical fold over here at the bottom and a bit of flag waving up the top there so something, probably capacitor or something in the vertical sections faulty in this one. But um, yeah, other than that seems to be working. Okay, so we'll pull this apart and have a look and see if I can see anything obvious. It may be something as obvious as a bulgy capacitor. Um, or it may not be obvious at all what's actually faulty in this and we'll have to do a bit of fault diagnosis so it looks like we've got a screw up in the handle here and a couple of screws down here under the base let's see junk out of the way and there goes my screwdriver starting to come apart it still feels like we've got something there there's another screw there's a couple of holes there maybe some sort of clips oh there we go a clip and it's that simple to be inside this we've got Feels like a power transformer or something here down in the back there. So power transformer and speaker down on the back panel plus our battery connections. But the rest of the TV basically slides out. We've lost our little stand off the bottom there. Not that we need to worry about that at the moment. And straight away, is that our vertical output? It might be. Got a horizontal, little tiny horizontal output transformer and transistors. There's a bit of a jungle IC, looks like an AN, yeah, AN 5151, which was quite a common chip in TVs from memory. And yes, we got our radio section down in here by the look of it, and I'm guessing that's our vertical output there. But where's our yoke connect to? Neck ball, so there's a horizontal yoke winding. A vertical yoke winding actually goes down under the front of you somewhere by the look of it. If that's what that is. Must be, yeah. So I'm not sure why it heads over there. If that's the vertical output, that might be a voltage regulator there. And I guess then. One or the other. That looks quite a bit like a vertical the way it's set up with the caps, but we'll see. Hopefully this, this board should slide out somehow. Probably got to take all the knobs off the front for starters. Here's a flat blade screwdriver to prise them off, I think. Yeah, that's one of them. Gotta be careful not to lose those little ones. There's two of them. So our switches are free. Just be careful we're not going to break the picture tube or anything by pulling on any of this stuff. I think, is there any screws in there? Just seems to slide into the case, but currently doesn't feel like coming out. A little Samsung picture tube made in Korea there. Not sure what year this came out, but 
it was probably in the 90s, I would guess. Certainly not one of their earlier ones. Oh, there we go. Prize on the board seems to be loosening it. Just where it slots into a couple of plastic bits there. Oh, it still doesn't feel quite free. Uh, where's our radio dial and stuff? So that might be the next problem. Yeah, we've got a radio string. Yeah, that's a worry. Got a dial cord going up the front here. It doesn't look like there's any way of removing that with the circuit board. Oh no, it's coming. It is coming. Ah, oh, it's on a separate bit of plastic. Okay. Something's still in that corner. It's holding this thing together. The only screws. Oh, so that's screwing that radio bit in. Oop. I don't know what just happened then. I broke something, I think. There must have been a clip of some sort. Yep. Okay. So now we're getting something. We've got our circuit board free here. Not the easiest thing to work on with the transformer attached. Now, see so if we can actually put this in a position where we can look at it. So, uh, it's pulling on there if that board is. It might take the neck board off. Carefully, not to break the tube. And now we're just hanging on by our EHT lead mainly. I could remove that, but our vertical yoke winding comes down near this chip here and I'm not seeing uh, any sort of vertical output transistors or integrated circuit that I can see as a TDA something that may be our audio amp radio I'm guessing that's voltage regulator deflection yoke V horizontal output transistor Hmm, interesting, yeah, there's not much in the way of actual vertical out here. I don't know whether that chip can actually run it directly. I thought that was just a small signal chip. I guess we'll have to trace our yoke connections here. Be hard to make out where they are. I think it's these here. So we've got something there. And we've got our capacitor there. Looks like a coupling cap or the like. And then we've got, oh, that does go into that little chip. So we may, it may not be an audio chip, it may be that that is our vertical output, that little 8 pin dip package there. It's a TDA7231 I think. So I might just go and look that up and see if I can find some data on that one. So I've just looked up this TDA chip and it turns out it is actually an audio amplifier chip, but obviously being used for a vertical output which is a similar sort of frequency basically 50 hertz in australia so it's only got to amplify 50 hertz so they've used a little four pin pack basically all it is it's got one side of the chip is all ground pin one is our our b plus our voltage pin two is the output and three and four are the inputs looks like an input minus an input positive um, so that's all there is to that so i might power this back up again and we'll just have to check what the voltage is on the pin there. I didn't actually check what voltage it's meant to run on, which I should have done, I guess, but... Ooh. Bit of power there somewhere still. Which is odd when I plug the mains cord in. Nothing gets short. Okay, are we... I think we've changed mode to radio by the sound of that. And uh, UHF, TV, AM, FM, yes, yeah, so we're on FM radio. So that should be back on TV. Uh, some measures. Yeah. Okay, let's just have a quick look. So I've got ground on one side. Pin 2 is our output. Oh, this is probably a capacitor here, and that's probably a B. Plus. We don't seem to have much B plus there. That is it. 
So it must be this other pin. No. Maybe I'm not making a good earth connection here. Sometimes these circuit boards have a bit of flux and stuff on them and it's a bit hard to connect to them. I don't seem to be getting voltage. Oh, there we go. So yeah, 9 volts, which could be a tad low, but this is a 12 volt TV. That pin goes to there, we've got a capacitor or something. Is that a resistor or something? So low voltage could cause something like a, a bit of fold over. I'll just send that back over off. So the electrolytic capacitor there. Uh, go back to here. Ground. 9.75. Does drop a little bit, but only about 0.3 of a volt. Now that car over here is somewhere. Yeah, 9.78 volts. So that quite likely is what we're getting out of our regulator. Where is our regulator? Oh, over there. Fourteen volts in. Fourteen volts out. I guess, oh, that'd be the base. In yeah, nine point nine volts. It's about nine point four of that's getting to our chip, so that's probably okay. So the only other likely thing is something to do with one of these capacitors. It's not running hot or anything. Mains for now. Okay. I do have a bit of that brown glue in this, which doesn't look too good. Sometimes it absorbs moisture and the like, and can become conductive, but I don't think this is actually that, that resistor that feeds the vertical chip doesn't look the best. I still don't think that's the problem, so a yoke, a yoke may have a coupling capacitor here somewhere. Goes into that stuff there, there's a little cap there. Usually they're coupled to ground. All positive, one or the other via a capacitor, electrolytic. There's some sort of cap there, probably feeds something back to the chip. The potentiometer and then yeah I would back to ground so it's, it's got a direct connection to ground I think on one side of the oak where are we now I've lost where the oak connector is where on earth are you so that's that So, yeah, looks like it's at least very low resistance to ground. Uh, 1.3 ohms to ground. So there might be a resistor or something there. So the other side connects to the. So there is a coupling cap to the to the output of the chip there. This electrolytic here, which is probably about 100 mic or something. thousand microfarad so it's probably worth putting an ESI meter on that and seeing how it measures reset that to zero all good now that's that capacitor there I'm not mistaken. 1.8, I think that's a bit high for a thousand mic or so the least. Uh, am I actually on it? Yeah, a thousand mic should be like 0.09, 0.12, something like that. So that could be 
our problem. Trying to get the soldering iron fired up. And it might be worth just putting our thousand market cap across that one. Now that's our, that's just our vertical chip B plus capacitor. You see that's point two. We have a little one. I think it's there. 3.1, which would be right because that'd be like a very low value one. So it could be as simple as a oh, power of beauty. Simple as a what thousand mic capacitor that's failed. I might unsolder that and see how it measures. And yeah, I'll just go and grab another spare one and so we can solder that in there. Okay, soldering iron should be warmed up now, so see if we can get that cap out of there. It is those two leads there. I'm right. That's the one. Now just remember the negative faces over to the left here. Doesn't look too bad. But that doesn't mean much with an electrolytic capacitor. Uh, yeah, it's still measuring about 1.4, so it's not completely gone. Is it a 16 volt or something? 10 volt? Well, I've got a 16 volt here. So negative over this way. I'll leave that leads on that just for now. Now let's compare what the ESR is like on that one. Oh, where would that spring come from? Yeah. Oh, there we go. 0.4. That's a bit better than 1.3 or whatever it was. So what we'll do, we'll hook the picture tube back up. So I can actually see the picture. going on so hopefully that's in the right position remove that uh, let's try and find a way where we can run all this stuff safely without shorting anything out and just be careful these solder suckers are conductive as I once found out when I stuck one under a TV chassis to to prop the chassis up to do something and it burned a heap of holes in the side of my solder sucker so high voltages will actually conduct through that plastic because it's anti-static and that means that it's got some sort of carbon or something in there and conducts and there we go we've got a a good picture I can lift that up without stuffing it up Looks like it's actually got a bit too much vertical height, maybe. Might have to put a test pattern generator on that to tell, but yeah, that was our problem. What just happened to the sound? Yeah, something's... Better give the um, volume control a clean as well, but... I think that might actually be an okay picture. So we'll solder that capacitor in properly and give the volume control a squirt of contact cleaner and that should do the job hopefully. I may have a solder from one of the pins. Push that cap right back down into the board. Oops, that's moved. Of course. Yeah, that's got it. Cut the leads off. Chuck them away. Now, 
Let's have a look here. Looks like I might have to take the knob off the actual volume pot here. At least ideally do so. That's my little Phillips. It's got all that horrible varnishy, lock tidy sort of stuff in there, like nail polish. But it's coming off alright, thankfully. It's a little 10k pot there. Should be able to lift this little plastic cover on it. There we go. Get your fingernail under that. And we'll give it a squirt of contact cleaner in there. Put the knob back on and give that a rotation a few times. They're always pretty crappy, these little pots, so I don't hold high hopes of it staying good for long, even if it does start working again. Most of the time you had to replace them, but I'm not even sure if they're available anymore, so I'm not going to be worrying about that too much at the moment. Give that a good turn. Watch how a dial cord doesn't come off there, it's starting to do something funny. Although I'm not sure it was in the right position. I had trouble seeing the pointer when I first tuned this into the set-top box, but anyway, we'll try and get that going. Yep, we're away. Don't have any sound for some reason. And there it is. Cool, that's really bad. Could be one of these switches as well. In relation to yeah, that's what it is, I think. Squirt some contact cleaner down into the end of that. That's the radio TV switch. Border assessments with the Australian Border Force, and they're working through that application that received and when they're in a position to authorise it, well, they will. Um, and, that, and that's how that will follow. Yeah. So thanks on automatic uh, testing. We, we may... DX. For everything alternative, new and old, join me, Rob, tonight on high risk, but because... Everything alternative. DX. Of uh, asymptomatic children in... One was positive, so we've already done... Hmm, sounds, sounds a bit more reliable. Um, there is increasing evidence from Europe now, studies from the UK, studies from the Netherlands, that consistently show that transmission amongst children is not is not being seen. It's not seen. No, we've lost sound again. A strong basis uh, to test uh, a cohort of children at this time. So we will have a dodgy connection here somewhere. Uh, I think on the speaker, I think. Oh wow, I think the wire's loose on the speaker. Us pulling on it probably hasn't helped much. But yeah, they're not, not the best built, these little TVs, to say the least of it. Oh yeah. I think we've loosened one of the, uh, yeah, the wires loose on the, like I say, me me pulling on these wires probably hasn't helped. Yeah, it's actually un it's wrapped around the terminal, but if it ever had solder, it's... I don't, like it. no, I don't think they've ever soldered it, to be honest. Nah. Nah, it's glued in, so I can't easily remove it, so I can show you, but... Yeah, one terminal's definitely got solar. This terminal here, yeah, now someone's put the... Looks like someone's just put the speaker through the eyelet. The, sorry, the wire through the eyelet, bent it round. Yeah, there's no solder on there. <laughs> so this has probably had a potentially intermittent speaker since the day it was made. So there's always something gets through the factory without being done occasionally. In my, um, first job on Monday kind of thing, or last job on Friday, whichever one it is. got it. And look at that, I'll just let that cool a bit and then uh, much better. Yeah well I did whoever in Malaysia was meant to solder that on didn't and I've just done their job for them. 
probably going on 30 years later. So I'll just check this um this dial cord looks a bit strange like it's sitting on a very odd design. So it wraps around we're basically pulling the dial pointer across. This must be something used to keep that out. It's a very dodgy design. Unless it's something to do with the front panel. Oh, maybe it just there's a track on the front panel forces it into place, I reckon. Even though it's trying to pull sideways. So we've got a bit of a... It really is pulling sideways at the bottom. God, what a dodgy design that is. <laughs> but again, not surprising with these cheapo things. I don't know who actually designed them, but it probably was Samsung or someone. The early Samsung stuff was pretty poor quality. And often this sort of stuff was, you know, originally made in Korea and certainly designed there. Oops. Oh yeah, it looks like it probably does. It does it, hang on. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's actually flipping sideways as well. I think it just scrapes down the side of a bit of plastic in the TV there, although it's got a bulge in it, so I wouldn't really trust that to do the job. Not a very good design. I think that's all it is. Eh? It just scrapes down a flat bit <laughs> down the side of the TV. So that's probably it. I'll just make sure this circuit board is sitting in the. There's a couple of slots in the front there. Looks like it is. Can't see the one on the other side. Oh, that's it. That's in. Tubes plugged back in. So I think that's it. It should. I don't know if it's got slots in the back. But if it is made by Samsung, it'll probably be a pain to get the circuit board to slot up the case properly, which was a common thing with Samsung designs. There's no slots there, so... It really doesn't feel like it wants to go up at all. But is that because something's catching... If the cables go forward, they should just... Maybe that, you know, the, the risk is the cables will actually push back against the picture tube socket or something if you're not careful. So you've got to be careful you don't break anything. That's nearly back together, but not quite. Is there something in this... Oh, yeah, well, oh, there you go. Our, our band switch here hasn't come through. This probably just needs... Yeah, flicking through. That's all it was. Now the case is tight. I should really check it before putting the screws in one more time, but... Hopefully we won't have any problems. Pretty confident that speaker's fixed. Because I could actually see it dropping in and out with the sound, or moving around as the sound dropped in and out. Screw under the handle. Telescopic antenna is still in good condition, which is amazing. Then we better put our little knobs back on the front here. And the little arrow pointing that way, they're the same. Looks like it. I doubt they would have made them differently, but you never know. Oh, well, I didn't have the tube out there. I probably should have given it a clean on the inside while I had it apart. Okay, so if we have had any luck, turn the power back on. I've got sound, we've got picture, and we've got our Prime Minister back telling us about the cough. Australia as businesses back up on their feet and consumption seeks to lift uh, to back to levels where it yeah, it's very hard to see the tuning dial it sort of sits back so I don't know if that was always like that but 
Seems to be how it's made. Plus how they are. Pretty shonkily put together the cabinets on these things. In their own health to be able to go and engage again in the community, which I sat, sorry to sound like a broken record, but that my downloading the COVID safety was so important. That is the ticket to opening up our economy and getting people back into jobs and getting businesses back um... again and opening up those opportunities uh, for social interaction again. So Yeah, looking at on the program guide it looks like the linearity and height's pretty right on that so that's that's pretty good hmm. get rid of that rubbish so what's going on there but there we go. We'll just uh, we've got some adjustments on the back here. Make sure they're working all right as well. Bit less brightness. Oh, a bit too much contrast, maybe. Yeah, that pot's a little diggy. And our vertical. The main one is the, the app. Uh, the co downloading the COVID Safe app is the major obstacle now between us uh, and our freedom. Up a lot of these restrictions, uh, in, a, in a cautious way, in a careful way. And it's not open slather. That's not what has ever been contemplated. And I wouldn't want to raise expectations in that sense. They'll be carefully considered because we want to. But yeah, there we go. A nice quick fix. Well Guess we should make sure the radio is working. Never a fan of volume controls that went up to the left, but there you go, that's how some people like to do it. Yeah, radio's working. Other problem with these is when you change the tuning on the radio, you lose your tuning on the television as well. This ends up God knows where. Yeah, the volume the power switch kicks in a little early on that but they were very crappy little pots those these little flat switch pot ones but there we have it one little fixed tv thanks for watching